Hi, boys and girls, Mrs. Batliner, and I'm here today with another book in our March Madness book edition. Uh, today's book is um, a pretty tough one in regard to feelings, and, I, and the title of it is Big, and it is by another New York Times best-selling creator, Vashti Harrison. So these books that were chosen were by pretty important uh, illustrators and authors. Big. Once there was a girl with a big laugh and a big heart and very big dreams. So if you look at her there in her uh, in her crib, it says, dream big. She learned her ABCs and one, two, threes. She always said please and thank you and even put away all of her toys. At dinner, she ate all her food. What a big girl you are, the adults would say. And it was good. So think about when you are little, when you do something. Uh, if you have little siblings, brothers and sisters, and they do something exciting, they're like, look at how big she is, or she is such a big girl. And it was good for this little girl. She grew and learned and laughed and dreamed and grew and grew and grew. And it was good. So she was caring and kind and considerate and smart and creative, compassionate, imaginative, free, fun, graceful, nimble. And it was good. Until it wasn't. You're a big girl, aren't you? So just take a look at how she's kind of growing into a big girl. And look at all the people around her. They are not so big. If you look at that lower illustration, it looks like the two girls behind her are kind of talking about her. All right, what grade is she in? Yeah, if you look at the bottom part of there, she's in second grade. How would you feel if someone was talking about you? You know, some people it doesn't bother at all. And other people become very, very sad. One day, something big happened. I can't wait for the recital. I'm going to be a rose. I'm going to be a daisy. OMG. <laughs> Whale. Help. Look, she's stuck. Moo. More like a moose. So take a look at the friends or so-called friends and her classmates. Are they helping her? Not at all. They're like making fun of her. So there you have the teacher. She's kind of looking at her, the recess aid. She's trying to lift her out. And ah, what happens at the bottom of that picture? Yeah, the swing broke. Don't you think you are too big for that? You could have hurt someone. You should know better. You're in big trouble. It made her feel small. So when you look around your classroom in your neighborhood, are there people of all different sizes? Yeah. Are there people of all different heights? Most definitely, right? Are there people of all different colors? Absolutely. Yeah, so, so when we're different, sometimes it's really, really hard. So if you think about it in your class, when you have someone who's really, really tall, you're like, oh my gosh, look at how tall he is. Or if someone's really small, oh my gosh, look at how short, right? So we have to start thinking about our words because when we talk some words, it makes people feel small. 
the words stung and were hard to shake off. So too big, ha, 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 cow, moose. So when you say things to people, what happens is it sticks with them. She began to feel not herself, out of place, exposed, judged, yet invisible. So now, really looking at those illustrations, do you think she is really that much bigger than the other kids in her classroom? No, I don't think so, but she feels that way, right? And I cannot tell her that her feelings are wrong. So she feels so out of place and so judged by everybody else. Everyone had advice. Hmm, that's no good. Try this instead. But that kind of hurt too. So look at what that teacher was doing. She was making her from the pink outfit and then kind of painting her. If you look at the, at the paint can there, listen to the name of this paint. Husky Gray. How do you think that made her feel? If it was me, I would feel horrible. This is perfect for you. So look at all the other cute little pink flowers. They're all dainty. And then the teacher made her into this big giant. I don't know. It looks like a mountain with clouds. You're just too big. The flower costume won't fit. Where are you going? What did I say? So did the teacher's words hurt as well? Most definitely. What the teacher did to her maybe even made her feel worse than the kids. So she just runs away. I think she's feeling. I want you to notice on these pages what starts to happen to her. Yeah, what do you notice about these pages? In her mind, she keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger right? Look, she's almost so big that she doesn't fit on the pages anymore. Aren't you too big to be crying? Have you tried being smaller? Why can't you just fit in? How do you think those words are making her feel? Think they're making her feel horrible. Is it her fault that she's so tall? No, she doesn't want to make her so tall. One day, she finally let it all out. Too big. Graceful. Moose. Creative. Ha ha. Big girl, big cow. So I want you to kind of notice the different colors of those words. The pink words, are those good words or hurting words? Yeah, they're good words. They're creative and graceful. But then take a look at the black words. Too big, moose, ha ha, cow. So look what she's doing. One day she finally let it all hang out and started to see things more clearly. She decided to make more space for herself. So look what she did. 
These are yours. They hurt me. So look, she goes to all of those people who said all of those mean things to her. And she's giving those words back, saying, here, they're yours. They hurt me. And look, she's holding on to the creative and the graceful and the kind, all those positive things she thought about herself. Not everyone understood or even listened. So look, the little boy took whale. It was just a joke. Big girl, it's not that serious. Too big. You're too sensitive. Some tried. I didn't mean to hurt you. So a lot of times when somebody says mean things to us, at first they're like, it was just a joke. Well, it may have been just a joke for them, but the words really hurt you. It wasn't a joke for you. All right. So I want you to start thinking about before you say something to somebody, think about those words and if they're going to hurt somebody. All right. And if in that bottom illustration there, the, the girl or the, the teacher said, I didn't mean to hurt you. So maybe we should think about that before we actually let those words out. But they still couldn't see. I can help you change if you want. No, thank you. I like the way I am. That she was just a girl. And she was good, imaginative, compassionate, gentle, smart, funny, sweet, kind, creative, good. So she didn't want to, them to see her as this big girl. She just wanted them to see her as just a girl that was imaginative, creative, compassionate. All right, so let's listen about the author and why she decided to write this story. In childhood, big is good, big is impressive, aspirational. But somewhere along the way, the word begins to tell us something different. That big is bad. That big is undesirable. I was never a dancer, but I did get stuck in a swing when I was younger. Some of the older kids and I were playing in the, on the baby swings and I couldn't get out. I was the only one to get into trouble. My size indicated to adults that I was big enough to know better, even though I was just a kid. I learned that day that my body did not fit. It did not belong and adults no longer saw me as a little girl who could make innocent mistakes. While my experience was far less overt than the one in this book, the thoughts and words at work are the same. A child sits on the crosshairs of adultification bias and anti-fat bias. She is subjected to judgments and prejudices that are harmful and have lasting effects. Still, she finds enough self-love to return the words that were unkind and unhelpful. I hope she will stand as a guide to all who need to see her journey, especially those of us who are black girls in big bodies. I remember thinking I couldn't wear pink, that it was too bright a color and might make me stand out. From an early age, I developed insecurities that told me it was safer to shrink into the background and try not to call attention to myself. I chose a color palette for this book to reject that old thinking. In color psychology, pink is associated with gentle love, tenderness, and nurturing. Pink flowers symbolize innocence, playfulness, and happiness. These are all things that girls deserve. Her body's not a problem that needs fixing, and neither did mine that day on the playground. What needs fixing are the implicit biases we all hold. I wish I could give that girl a hug, the part of her that is me, and the part of her that might be you and tell her that she is deserving of the care and joy in the world, no matter what. So I hope you enjoy this story and I hope you kind of learn a lesson about words to hurt people. And the next time you think about saying something that's not very nice, I want you to think about this little girl. All right. I will catch you the next time.